Example one on lesson 76, we're going to be solving a system of equations, which we've done now for, since um, like lesson 53 of Algebra 1, right? And up till now we've had two <coughs> unknowns. Now we have three. We're in three-dimensional world now. Um, x, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Z, there's no Y. And for right now, the equation that only has two letters in it, we're going to do a substitution to get us to a point where we're comfortable. Okay, because I think I can say without a doubt, everybody in here can do a system of two equations with elimination or substitution very easily, right? Yeah. It's something we practiced a lot, we've gotten good at. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get myself to that level. I want to get myself out of this three-dimensional world into my two-dimensional world that I'm comfortable in. And the way we do this is we take one of these equations, doesn't matter which one, but again, if it only has two variables, it's easier to work with that one. I'm looking for a, a one <coughs> coefficient. One coefficient is my best friend. And if I just make that say x equals 3z, or I could make this say y over to this side equals 3x plus 2z minus 21. Or I could move the z over there, z equals 2x plus 2y minus 12. All those are legal. They're a little bit more complicated than y equals 3z, but anything that, that gets one letter equal to a bunch of other stuff, or even just a single thing, is helpful. When I get this equation to say x equals 3z, what that allows me to do then is go back here and here to change both of those x's into 3z's. If I do that, notice I get 2 times the replacement for x, 3z, plus 2y minus z equals 12. If I take it into the top equation, so again, 2x changing x to 3z because that's what x equals according to the bottom equation. And if I simplify this as much as possible, I'm going to keep it in, in alphabetical order. So I'm going to put 2y first. This is 6z <coughs> minus z makes a total of positive 5z <coughs> equals 12. So my goal is to get a system of equations with two variables. This has just y and z in it. Then if I go back to this second equation, and change this x into a 3z, that second equation becomes 3 times 3z minus y plus 2z is equal to 21. And again, combining like terms and all that stuff, alphabetical order, negative y, this is 9z plus 2z makes plus 11z equals 21. So with a substitution into both the top two equations, I go from three equations with three variables into two equations containing just y and z. So now, this problem here is what I already know how to do pretty well, right? It gets me back to my comfort zone, my I can do this problem without any difficulty. All right, I want to double this. So negative 2y and positive 2y. Alright, so I'm, I'm getting rid of the y's because I find that to be easier. I could also make this 55 and that 55, but making this into a negative 2 seems a lot easier, right? So again, you can make those decisions on elimination. What, what does it look easier to get rid of? In this case, y. Now, I could actually write negative 2y plus 22z equals 42, right? Alright, but again, I'm, I'm basing this on my belief in you guys as far as doing this. Here's a corner you can cut on these problems. If you go ahead and multiply and then add negative 2y plus 2y is 0y, right? Cancels. 22z plus 5z is 27z equals 42 plus 12 is 54. I believe you guys can handle that. If you can't, then go ahead and multiply everything by 2 and then look at it and then add the like terms and so on. But again, Negative 2y plus 2y cancels, 22z plus 5z is 27z, 42 plus 12 is 54. Divide both sides by 27, we get z is equal to 2. Then I need to find y. I can go back here or here to find y. I can also go right here to find x. I probably find y first personally, but our job is to find all three variables x, y, and z. Right now I've got x out of the picture because I substituted, so if I'm just working this alone and pretending this doesn't exist, just find y and z. So if I go to the blue equation, 2y plus 5z is equal to 12. I change z into a 2 because that's what z equals. 5 times 2 is 10, moves to this side, becomes minus 10. 
2y equals 2, therefore y is equal to 1. x equals 3z. And just using this fact here, again, z still equals 2, so x is equal to 6. And what I get is x, y, and z, and the order I want to write them in is x, y, z order as an ordered triple. x first, y second, z last. And there's my answer, 6, 1, 2. To give you an idea of what this represents, these three graphs here represent planes in three-dimensional space. And um, just to take a look around the room, this wall right here is a plane. All right, the ceiling is a plane, that wall over there is a plane. Those three planes intersect up in the top right corner at a point. Okay? You can see it on the video, but just imagine the room. Right. But they intersect in a point. That point represents something like this. You go this far, you go that far, then you go up this much. That's what three-dimensional space is. Um, you don't have to graph these. As you can see, I got the answer with no graphing whatsoever. But just to give you an idea of what that looks like as an answer, So if you imagine, this is the x-axis and the y-axis that we normally work with. So the, imagine an x-y-axis, kind of, maybe, maybe thinks the y goes that way, but just imagine the normal x-y-axis, and then the z-axis jumps up off your page. That's what three-dimensional space looks like. To graph three-dimensional space, it's kind of weird graphing. It's, it's kind of like drawing a rectangular solid. All right. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces on the x-axis, put a dot. I go 1 space on the y-axis, put a dot. And I go 2 spaces up on the z-axis and put a dot. That's the first step. All right. Then I connect the dots from the origin. So this and this and this. This extra little piece that jumped in there for no reason isn't part of it. All right. Then I draw parallel lines, so I draw this parallel to this, and that parallel to that, like so, and leave one out. Oh, here, this one up here parallel to this. And then you come down and across and across, and then you go over here, like so, and up. Oops, went too far. To kind of draw this three dimensional box here. Then, if you just imagine, if you go six spaces over, one space on the y axis, two spaces up, this represents the dot that is 612. And to draw a three dimensional dot, you have to draw a box. I mean, there's no way around it, so that's how you do it. But um, again, that's how you graph in three dimensions for the sake of just putting a single point. If you had to graph an actual graph in three dimensions, that's a little more confusing. That's the Calculus 3 objectives, but thankfully I don't teach Calculus okay. 3. It's been a while, but yeah, it's, it's not pleasant to graph three dimensions in my opinion, but um, some art ability is necessary, but that's all that is. But again, that's what we're looking for here, but again, a substitution to change a three system into a two system, solve the two system like normal, and then use either one of those answers to find the missing piece, or maybe even both to find the other piece. Once you've found all three, order triples, you find the answer.